welcome to the Parenting Roundabout Podcast. I'm Terry Morrow. And I'm Katherine Haleko. Every Thursday, we're bringing you a library find, a pick from our archives, and a parenting or pop culture tidbit or two. Let's start with Catherine's Library Find of the Week. So, Terry, if you recall, a few weeks ago, it was the Big Bad Wolf, no, Little Red Riding Hood and the Big Bad Editor. Yes. And today we are returning to the children's book grammar (laughs) space with a book called Comparatives with Parrot being spelled P-A-R-R-O-T as in the bird. Yes. Um, This is kind of like a, it's almost a board book it's uh-huh. like a sturdy large book and it's you yes. know fast and faster messy and messier uh. that kind of thing um and it, the illustrations are great like very sort of graphic and um bright colors Fine. and it turns out to be part of a series we have oh hip pos- hip hip opposites hip opposites <laughs> okay rhinoceros Llama okay. phones, <laughs> and then this one, which is comparatives. The so, Grammar Zoo book series. Yes, Grammar is a zoo. Yes, it right. sure is, <laughs> as you well know. Um, Let's see what could we have for commas. Mm. Who, who, Chameleons. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think. See, oh, ox. There you go. Ox for commas. Yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> we need to indoctrinate the the we do. toddlers. <laughs> we do. <laughs> I got a manuscript the other day, and the authors just said, "No, we don't like Oxford commas. Don't put them in." And I'm like, "It sounds stupid without." Yep. I mean, a simple series. I'll give it to you, but there are non-simple series where it really needs a comma. Yeah. This is no longer the Oxford comma. This is just a clarity comma. Right. But, woo, we're not tied by commas. We're too cool for commas. <laughs> we don't need your commas. <sighs> yes. So, anyway, I thought well, this was gosh. quite charming. Um, Train up your little copy editor now. That's right. Get them. AI will be doing that work by the time they get to ready for a job, but still, <laughs> they will be able to write a sentence. It'll be great. I got to say, AI in the form of Grammarly, <laughs> oh. you know, it does help as a sort of backstop. Yes. But I do have to overrule it. Yes. You know, fairly often. So I usually people turn- do not rely yeah. on that. No, just think when you think about how great it would be to, to AI check your grammar, think about how useful spell check is on your text messages. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it, it helps you and sometimes it sends out something really stupid. Right. So um, it's not quite there yet. No. I, in Microsoft Word, I usually turn off the grammar check. Every now and then I put it on and it's like for every one useful tip, there's, you know, 50 English isn't your first language, is it, dear? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. so we just say, th- thanks. Thanks so much. I'll just figure it out. Right. <sighs> Gosh. But theoretically, AI will get better at it. And, I mean, it is theoretically something AI should be able to do. Because there are Yeah, rules. I mean, there's a rule. There's a style yes. sheet. Yeah. yeah. But there are nuances. There are human nuances that it misses. So. Yes, in my... Sometimes you're trying to make a joke. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and uh, I work on, you know, 17, 18 plus different websites, and they all have their own style. Oh, gosh. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, uh, theoretically, you can train your AI, like, here's the rules, but they don't always... (laughs) No. Cover, you know, they can't think of everything. Oftentimes no. those style rules are not driven by the kind of logic that AIs can understand. Right. So sometimes even copy editors can't understand. Yeah. You want it that way? <laughs> are you sure? Why are we doing that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
You think the customers will understand this? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, the, the grammar, grammar books for very young children seem like a great idea to me. A great, a great use of the board book form. Right. If you're going to have, you know, ABCs and one, two, threes and colors and shapes, yes. let's, let's keep it going. You know, let's do parts of speech. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I was my, when my kids were young, they were learning English as all kids that age are, but from a huge deficit. Right. So having something like this to be able to reinforce that stuff rather than just in a story would have been super. Right. And with cute pictures. Yeah. As well. With cute pictures. Yeah. Yes. I was often the one who liked the cute pictures. Look, <laughs> look at the cute parrot. <laughs> like, I'm bored. Can I go do something else? But but it's in a car. Wouldn't your son get into <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> what kind of car is it? What's the expiration date? Where's the license plate? Right. Still. What kind of key does it use? He's yeah. not so interested in cars in the abstract as he is in, in may I have your keys and go sit in your car and play right. in it. Right. Um, or may I look at your keys and tell you what your make and model is? That always impressed people. Mm -hmm. It's a parlor Good trick sort of interesting trick. cars. Yeah. But, uh, well, that is very cute. That is a nice library find. Does that get a lot of circulation, those books? I guess not because I have never seen – I've only seen the parrot one. Huh. And th this is the first time I can recall seeing it in, huh. you know, like – 14 months or whatever. Make up a little table in the children's room. Yes. <laughs> For your grammar education pleasure. Yeah. Here, please. Get Enjoy in. these parrots. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well. Just make sure your kid knows that compare it is not. How you spell it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's compare it these two things, Miss So and so. <laughs> Your child misunderstands words. Yeah. <laughs> I can always find the dark side of something. <laughs> well, tell us well, what you are This is are something I don't see the dark side on, though. Yes. Yes. I should have mentioned this weeks ago because it's been out now for a little while. But I am still very much enjoying Post Malone's country album, F1 Trillion. Mm. As as the kids are doing today, it's one disc that dropped that has a bunch of collaborations. And then, oh, wait, an hour later, here's more. Here's another whole album's worth of music. So um, it is a what we would have called in the olden days a double album. Uh -huh. But the, um, the first one is mostly collaborations with country artists that I largely recognized. Tim McGraw, Hank Williams Jr., Morgan Wallen, Blake Shelton, Dolly Parton, Brad Paisley, Luke Combs, Lainey Wilson, Jelly Roll, Ernest, Chris Stapleton, Hardy, Sierra Farrell, and Billy Strings. The last two of those I haven't heard of it. The rest, wow, hi. I know yeah. you guys. And Even I know them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, they're pretty bedrock country folk. Right. And, um, and the the... Collaborations are just delightful. Uh, the songs are a lot of fun. I find it just really listenable and enjoyable. And I have had two earworms from it so far. For For the first little while, I was constantly humming and singing the song Hide My Gun, which is a duet with Hardy, as, who, as you know, is one of my faves. Mm -hmm. uh, a very lovely melody and a romantic take on... Aiding and betting a felony. <laughs> so um, the, the the premise of the song is is in a line from the chorus, and I'm gonna bleep out something, but it's pretty easy to see what word that would be. You know I adore you. No bleep, I'd kill a man for you. And if I did, would you hide my gun? So you can see kids <laughs> dancing to that at their wedding, can't you? <laughs> you know that's commitment. Mm -hmm. Not just not just love, not just. But would you delay? the police when they were banging on the car door, would you, there were cement shoes come up somewhere along the way. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I've ever heard the word hypothetically used poetically in a song, but oh. this one does. And I appreciate that. And used so, correctly. Yeah, used correctly and uh, melodically. Wow. Uh, and it rhymes. So uh, for a while, that was all that was going through my head. And then lately it's switched to a duet with uh, Luke Combs, called Missing You Like This, 
it just has a gorgeous melody and one that is very whistleable. So I'm <laughs> going around <laughs> constantly whistling it. I got to learn, learn the words so I can sing it also. But, you know, of the basically like, yeah, I thought this would be easy to break up with you, but now I can't stop missing you. And I wish and I, I can't I stop singing this song. And I stop. Can, now I can't stop singing this song. I am not missing this song at all. It is in my head, <laughs> as I'm sure these other ones will be from time to time, because they're it's just they're very catchy. Good songs. Good singing, good uh, collaborations, just a thoroughly enjoyable album. Now, if you look up the reviews on it, you may see a certain amount of grouchiness. I find that country music critics tend to have a certain purity test and a lot of betting country going around. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know... A dissatisfaction with the way songs or music is made in Nashville right now, which involves a whole bunch of guys getting together and writing a song instead of one voice. Um, and yet the songs are so fun. I, I have trouble being mad at them. I mean, theoretically, I like that idea of an individual singer-songwriter. Mm -hmm. But dang, the songs that a whole bunch of guys sitting in a room write are catchy. <laughs> And isn't you know, there room in this something world to that. for all of it? Like, you would think. You know, I remember reading one review of this album that said something like, well, he should have done this and he should have collaborated with this person. And why is he plugging into the Nashville machine? And why is he singing with these popular people? But And then at some point he says, I suppose he was just trying to make an album that was fun. And he did that. But, and I'm like, <laughs> that is a lot. Give me <laughs> right. the album that is fun. <laughs> the album you're talking about sounds excruciating. <laughs> Give me the fun album. <laughs> So it's very fun is what I'm saying and definitely deserving a listen. Very country-ish, I think, in my limited, you know, uh, encyclopedic knowledge of, of uh, country. Uh -huh. it sounds real country to me. There's fiddles, there's uh, twang, um, and uh, there's artists that I've uh, associated with country, some for a long time. So, uh, you know, give it a listen. It's very fun. We'll have a link in the show notes to a playlist on YouTube that will give you all the songs in their uh, a lyric video form. Okay. Um, and uh, it will set your toes to tapping and your uh, lips to whistling. I guarantee it. <laughs> so, and there's also okay. a song. There's the steward he does with Morgan Wallen. As it, it's been out for quite some time, so uh -huh. people have generally heard it. But it has a, a lyric that goes... I had some help. It's not like I can make this kind of mess all by myself. <laughs> and that has been sung in my house. <laughs> Quite <Yeah>. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, you know what? Just uh, put down your highfalutin standards and enjoy you a fun album. Sounds good. We could all use that. Right. It's like playing a game of golf on a mystery island. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to relax and have a good time. That's right. And ignore the critics. <laughs> That's right. The others will be here soon enough. Just just enjoy while you can. Right. Okay, so what are we going to be enjoying this week from our archives? Well, back in 2021, I just thought this was a fun time. Uh, we talked about reality show challenges for parents. Um you know, things like occupying your child at a restaurant with the contents of your purse, um, you know, <laughs> oh my parenting, gosh, cooking, those days. parenting, cooking challenges <laughs> like, oh, I need six dozen cookies in the next hour or whatever. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought I would like to revisit that because we had yes. some, we had some good ideas. <laughs> yes. Did and we have this one. This is the one that would be hard for me now. I might not make this one. You are in a soundproof booth while your child does life things. Ah. Uh. And if you can stay in the booth, so it's not a soundproof. Okay, so, so you are in a booth watching your child do life things. If you can refrain from intervening right. for 45 seconds, you win a prize. Well, the longer you refrain, the, the, the bigger the prize. The longer you refrain, the bigger the prize. Right. I would not do well. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you could just, uh, let's see. Uh, they're going to call the health insurance company about something. Set the timer. 
How long until mom goes, no, 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 don't do that. Wait, don't do that. Wait, don't do that. Wait, no, let me take the phone. Let me take the phone. Let me talk to them. I would last like 10 seconds. I would lose all the money. Yeah. Um, or, you know, your child's going to balance a checkbook. Going to pay a bill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And just make be, any phone call at all. This would be challenging. Going to pack for college. Oh, boy. That... <laughs> I just, I looked at the pile <laughs> and I was like, how, how does this fit in one half of a dorm room? I'm like, <laughs> oh gosh. But, you know, we got there and like, you know, one whole box and another little piece was bedding. So that just goes on the bed and that doesn't take up any more space. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> And the clothes were all hung up, and they actually fit on the rod. So wow. I guess I get. But like, you know, as I told you, I was excused from the room um, <laughs> before basically anything was on. Yeah, uh, I got as far as making the bed, which took like multiple tries because you know the way it was like awkwardly raised and in a corner and probably the last time that bed will be made until <sighs> the next yeah. time you're in the room <laughs> until christmas or whatever <laughs> yeah but you know we put the mattress pad on and then we started putting then we put the fitted sheet on and mm -hmm. then i found the actual like mattress pad cover wow. thingy yeah. Um, so then we had to take off the fitted sheet and put on the mattress pad. I mean, this is a, this is another yes. challenge, you know, making a bunk bed or a loft, right. bed, whatever right. giant pain. We put on the, the fitted mattress pad and then realized it was upside down so that the like vinyl -y side was facing <laughs> up. I was like, oh, that's going to make you hot. Like, we can't do that. So then we had to take that off and flip it over and put that on, you know. I and think so, just putting on a mattress pad should be like a challenge in something. Yeah. So by the time we were done with that, it was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> I got it from here. You can go. Uh, oh, man. But he did send me a picture later. And yeah, the, he put the Keurig on the top shelf of his desk, like directly over his computer. Oh my. Which seems risky. It does. Is that where he actually uses it or is that is just that just where he puts it when he's not using it? Well, good question. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, but th that's not to ask. Yeah, <laughs> I know that was another stuff. that was an episode. You know, that was a challenge of like, yes. don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Yeah, I think that you OK, you, you put two moms on the stage and then you have them watching their kids do something. <laughs> and, you know, don't the name of the show is Don't Say It. <laughs> right. And the timer starts going. And they're both just struggling. The cameras go close on their face. They want it. Finally, one of them is just going to say, wait, stop. <laughs> eh. You lose. You lose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That would probably be a very short show because I don't think too many moms could keep yeah. their tongues. You would just have to keep, the kid would just have to keep doing dumber and dumber things. Right. The producers are in the kid's ear. What if, what if you did it this way? Uh, yes, we're gonna have your child put on a mattress pad. You just stand over there, mm -hmm. not final up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. That's the hardest thing at this age is that really, you both want them to be doing things independently and cannot bear for them to be doing things independently. Right. And surely some reality show uh, or some some game show person can make some money off of that. If they can find the contestants, <laughs> right. who, what, what parent in their right mind would <laughs> would submit themselves to that? <laughs> well, see, the dads would get you into it because the dads are like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, and uh, mom would be exploding. <laughs> they would have to have a doctor on staff for the. Uh... <laughs> Let's take your blood pressure, honey. That's right. yeah. 
Yeah, you'd have to be just kind of hooked up to a monitor. Maybe that's all they have to do. You know what? <laughs> you don't have to say anything. They hook the two moms up to a monitor, and then they watch their kids screwing something up. And whoever has the higher blood pressure loses. Yeah. Deep breaths. They'd <laughs> have a yoga coach, you know. Yeah. That's not as fun to watch. I, I don't no, think. I suppose I, not. I think. I think they, the mother ex- exploding with advice and running and fixing everything would be yeah. would be more fun. Right. And there's also just the kind of like not knowing. Like it's like the reverse <sighs> yes. honeymoon. What was the name of that show? Where they where the newly the newlywed, newlywed game. game the newlywed yes. game. It's like a reverse newlywed game because. Yes you know less and less about <laughs> what right. what they're doing and what's going on. Uh, yeah, that would be, that would be very scary. Like it's I, like- in the past, um, my, my son's, you know, because of the Apple ID and whatever else, like yeah. it, he would put stuff on the calendar on his phone and it would yes. show up on my phone. So I could see like when he had class and when he had uh-huh. rehearsal and all that stuff. Um, well, he figured out how to take that Uh-oh. off. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it, you could have a challenge of like how to, how to get the information without, you know, how to extract information without causing your child to, you know, flee from you or never speak to you again. You just do the very newlywed game thing of, okay, asking a question and then mom puts up what she thinks is the answer and the kid puts up what the actual answer is like, what did your child have for lunch? Right. (laughs) And you would put up a sandwich and the kid would put up a bag of Doritos. (laughs) If they ever happen to actually match, that would be... Yeah. It would be worth a lot of points. Right. Exactly. As rare as it would probably be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When is the last time your child made his bed? <laughs> well, he did complain. How many nights a week does your child brush their teeth? He did complain that the, uh, did I say this already? That they raised the prices for the laundry machines. Oh. By yeah. 25 cents. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> He was talking so about that one the, time a semester he washes his clothes right. and a quarter more. The whole quarter. It, he was <laughs> saying this when we were visiting my parents. My dad said, here's like, I'll give you a couple dollars and that will cover your entire <laughs> semester. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's too far to drive home with his laundry, huh? Um, No. He, I mean, not on a regular basis, but yeah. he... If he's coming home anyway, he certainly will, yeah. will bring it. Yes. Yeah. I, that's pretty much how I did my laundry my freshman year. Yeah. So after after that, I think I was in, por- in apartments with laundry facilities. But, you know, nothing like the mom laundromat. Right. And, you know, you can't be like, oh, no, 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 don't put that on high heat. You're like, you're going to sh- <laughs> shrink everything. <laughs> Because you know me, I have rules about yeah. how you do laundry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just have to not think about it. <clears throat> you know, they could have the the um, home visiting uh, show where they hide a bunch of stuff in your kids' belongings and see how many things the nosy mom finds. Ah. You know, and uh, you get points for each. And you should get shame points for each. Yes, point. exactly. How, how deeply in the suitcase you looked in his underwear. <laughs> so may, maybe like the highest point count <laughs> loses, but they don't right. let them know that till later. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Mom detective. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or just, you know, not even in the suitcase, just how well do you track your child? Yes, I was thinking about that too. Like, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, how many, how many apps do you, <laughs> do you have? How fine tuned is the location? Uh, do detector? you follow not only them, but also their friends on social media? That's right. You know, you want to see those party pictures. What do you determine? What, can, what have you learned from, uh, from, from Instagram today? That's <laughs> right. Yeah. All sorts of possibilities. Yes. Do you know that you should check the tagged posts? I don't know how. 
section on your child's profile. Like not Have just you set up an, an account as an anonymous young person. So that you can <laughs> yes. Did you notice when your child switched their TikTok account from private to public and back again? <laughs> Quick, watch everything that's been posted yes, before yes, they yes. change it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's I mean, uh... if you don't check periodically, you won't know. <laughs> I don't think my kids have TikTok. I hope not. <laughs> they do. I don't know. But they're mm-hmm. in their 30s, so I guess I don't have to care. My, my son spends a lot of time in his room with his phone. So I should probably be worrying about that, but. You know, they haven't started the game show yet. What do you know about what's on your kid's phone? (laughs) Can you name 10 things that he doesn't want you to know about that you could find? Yeah. Again, some of these, though, you should not. The higher score should look. Right. right, Exactly. (laughs) They should have a thing that goes, shame on you. (laughs) And you drop to the stage. It's all about resisting the... (laughs) The darker impulses, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. So they've been a bunch of decoy stuff. If you found the decoy stuff, that would be bad. Right. But uh, so many possibilities. Producers, mm-hmm. call us. Uh-huh. We'll set you up. We're ready. We got a million of them. Right. We got 10 years worth of stuff. <laughs> Almost 11 now, right? I think so. More than 10 anyway. Yeah. Gosh. That's all been time well spent. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. You can find all our episodes on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, on Instagram, or on Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And please visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash mamatude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about over the years. 